Yes, I would uh, like to join in Mike and the others who spoke in favor of getting our county together again. I've gone, I was a member of the legislature for 24 years. I was in the House 12 years and in the Senate 12 years. And uh, I've gone through three of those things when I was in the legislature. Back in the early 70s, one of the delegates wanted to split Rock District away from us. But it was long enough. Well, the Democrats fought that off and we kept that from happening. In the 80s, we didn't have too much of a problem. In the 90s, I decided to run for a local office. When they found out I was going to run for a local office here, they come with a hatchet to split Mercer County. Well, I had a lot of sleepless nights. I could not <coughs> abide with my county being split up, so I done a lot of begging, changing the direction. I told them I'd run again for the, uh, the Senate if I could keep this, my county together. And I did. I ran and was elected and served until 1996. So uh, you, you guys and ladies would make me awfully happy if, you, if we could get our county back together again, like it should be. If you look at the way it is now, it's gerrymandering at its worst. We have part of District 10 that don't even join uh, the other part of District 10 in our county. It's, it's sad. Now, if you go around to Sons County, but not in our county. And I think that's just ridiculous, and I hope you people will see fit to put our county back together with Mike said we're the eighth largest county in the state, and we don't deserve this to be done with us. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Brathway? Thank you, Senator. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the first uh, I think you're going about this whole redistricting the correct way. I wish it had been done this way 10 years ago. Uh, perhaps we'd still have a whole county in the senatorial uh, districts. I'm here in a dual role. One, as a citizen of West Virginia, but also in my role as the executive director of the South Bluefield Neighborhood Association. We've conducted discussions uh, over our last couple of meetings uh, regarding both the Senate redistricting and the House redistricting evidence that are ongoing. Uh, I'm here to convey to the task force that in the senatorial districts, maintaining county integrity should be paramount. So therefore, I am just echoing uh, what Mr. Vitsagura, Mr. Perriman, uh, former Senator Whitlow has said. Uh, it has uh, basically confused our population. And when they become confused, because we do have an aging population. They become disillusioned. And disillusionment leads to disappointment, which leads to despair and not actively participating in the electoral process. I think especially the way Mercer County has been gerrymandered in the past has led to a decline in confidence in our government to being able to adequately, equally, and fairly represent our county, our municipalities, and our towns. Because, quite honestly, when you're dealing with people the age that I deal with, many of them senior citizens, uh, with all due respect to Senator Fang, who I've met and uh, respect very much, uh, many of them do not know that Senator Fang represents them in that part of the county. And so, you know, this confusion, what I get most of the time when I talk about the importance of becoming involved is why? It doesn't do any good. And that's a direct result of the citizens that you serve being confused and disillusioned about active participation. 
This system of government works best when you have transparency and accountability to its lowest level, and that is the citizens. Hence, we also support single-member House of Delegate districts. Because we want to know who do we pick up the phone and call when we have an issue such as the turnpike issue, which is a great one down here, and express our opinion on where we think our county and our communities need to go. With that, I want to thank you for the time that I've had to speak with you. And I'd like you each to keep in mind that we're going to have to live for the next 10 years with your effort. And it's not an easy effort. It's a difficult task. But what I would ask you as a favor to the citizens of West Virginia to do is to put aside partisan politics and let statesmanship guide your decisions. Thank you very much. God bless you. I want to thank you, Senator Unger, and members of the committee for taking the time to travel the state and to get input from the people on this important issue. Express my disappointment that the House did not undertake the same thing. But I am in concurrence with the folks here from Mercer County, although I'm from McDowell, that I believe that county lines should be considered as much as possible in the redistricting process, not just in the Senate, but in the House. Uh, and it would be beneficial for folks in Mercer County to be in one senatorial district as opposed to having this spear shaped thing going up through the middle of the county and confusing, like the gentleman said here, confusing people and not knowing who actually represents them. Uh, McDowell County is just one county in uh, Senatorial District 6, so we have that already. But now the House, we have a population of 22,000 people in McDowell County in the last census, and we're carved up into three different delegate districts. And I can understand why some of it was done uh, for political reasons, because the majority of the Republicans live in the western end of the county, and that part of the county is divided up into the 21st and 22nd districts, which basically uh, would render their votes and opinions statistically insignificant. But I'm strongly in favor of, of looking at county borders in the House as well. I know you guys are not involved with that, and you'll take their recommendation as a courtesy that they will give you. But I want to speak up in favor of single member house districts as well. And the Dow County could be a single member house district and it would not violate the Constitution of West Virginia as our delegate on duty has spoken in the newspapers. He's, he's aware of my opinion. I've talked to him about this. He thinks that we're not too far apart. I think we're this far apart. But uh, <coughs> I think that people identify very strongly with county borders and that as much as is possible with the population distribution, the counties should be considered very highly when we all are putting together the new district lines. Thank you. Good evening. My name is John Schott. I live in Bluefield. Uh, I had the pleasure and privilege of serving in the House for two years for the 24th District and for six months in the Senate from the 10th Senatorial District. I also want to add my thanks to those of the others who's given you thanks for being here tonight. You know, the perception, the common perception in the southern part of the state is that we're often overlooked. And so we especially appreciate the effort that you made to be here tonight. As you might expect, I'm here to join with my colleagues who have uh, pleaded with you to rejoin Mercer County. It's the eighth largest uh, county. We believe we're entitled to have a senator who represents all of the citizens of Marshall County, not just some of them. And in fact, I think that should be our goal and the principle that guides us in this overall process. So what I would like to offer as a suggestion to you tonight is a, is a proposal that would deal with 19 counties in the southern part of the state. And I focused on the southern part of the state because that's what I'm most familiar with. And it would effectively reunite all of them. Reunite all those counties with the exception of two. Two counties would have to be split. I'd begin with my own county, Mercer County.
and add to that, and it's slightly different than Mr. Vinciguerra presented earlier, McDowell, Summers, and Monroe counties. And when you add those four counties together, and they're all the southernmost counties in that little crescent area, they come in at 111,806, which is 2,806 residents over the ideal 109,000, but well within the 5% barrier. You could then have Fayette, Nicholas, and Greenbrier as one district, and that would have 107,752 residents, 1,248 under the ideal area and well within the 5% variance. You go through <coughs> Raleigh and Wyoming counties, which total 102,655. Now that's where we have our first little problem because we need 895 uh, residents to meet the minimum uh, number of residents. However, with the surplus you have in the district of Mercer, McDowell, Summers, and Monroe, all you'd have to do is pick up those 895 citizens from one of those counties and still not do any damage to the numbers in, in Mercer, McDowell, Summers, and Monroe. More importantly, it would be better than what we have today, much better than what we have today. You could then go on further uh, west. If you look at Wayne, Mingo, Logan, and Boone, and you total those up together, you come up with 130,692. Now that's more than the maximum amount you're allowed, which is 114,450. You're 16,242 over your maximum. However, you've got Cabell County up there with nearly 100,000. You can take, and keep in mind, is already in, Wayne is already split, so you can take that surplus out of Wayne County, which is contiguous to Cabell County, that's 16,000 and add it to Cabell County and be within, you'd have 112,561. Alternatively, instead of Boone, you can take Lincoln County and you'd end up in that Wayne, Mingo, Logan, Lincoln County area with 127,783, which puts you 13,333 over that number, that maximum, which then you put, you take, uh, you take into, uh, I'm sorry, you take and carry that over and you use that up in the Wayne County, County area. Um, now, Kanawha County lacks about 25,000 to have two cents. You could either take Boone or Lincoln, as I indicated before, either Boone or Lincoln in that. Probably Boone is closer and probably makes more sense because it's right at 25,000 and have enough for two senators there. And there you go, then you get Mason, Jackson, and Putnam, which together are 112,021, which is slightly over the minimum, but well within the 5% variance. So what you've done is you've taken 19 counties, and you've only had to split two. You've united all the others. Now, I realize, and I apologize to any toes that I'm stepping on tonight, but I have followed, not personality, but the principle of the senator being accountable to all the citizens of the county in which he represents, not just some of them. So I'd ask you at least to give that some consideration. We ought to be guided by principles, uh, not necessarily personality. And thank you again for being here tonight.